Hey everybody, welcome back to Dinner Television, a very special Dinner Television. We join Courtney Terrio right now, who is live in Fort McMurray, has been there for the entire evening. You've spent quite a bit of time there, actually, in the last couple of weeks, uh, even months, up there, um, getting a sense of the rebuilding. Uh, and the, um, I mean, there's all these wonderful sort of initiatives and courage and hope, but obviously some still struggling with uh, the trauma the, of what happened to them as they left their city, Courtney. Yeah, well, I mean, we talked about the rebuild here in Fort McMurray, and uh, you can definitely see the scars still across the community, uh, but those physical wounds are starting to heal. As you mentioned, though, what has most people concerned up here is the invisible injuries that aren't quite coming along as fast. When June Butler Heskett returned home to Fort McMurray following last year's evacuation, she decided to ditch her paintbrushes for something new. Charcoal. There's beauty within the fire. June is painting with fire, or rather charcoal sticks retrieved from the blackened timber. These haunting souvenirs are now finding new life on her easel. When I was doing it, people started asking me for it. It's like, you know, that'd be really nice to hang in my girlfriend's new home when it's built and they're having a hard time. Can you create something for them? Like. Okay, so I create something for them, and, and they're like, can I give you payment? Can I, you know, and I'm like, you know what? Your payment is, is good. Like, you're paying it forward. You're giving your friends something. Turns out, healing through art is a passion that runs in the family. And our eyes up, high like the flames, our eyes up, spite of the June's daughter, Olivia, turned to music to entertain others at evacuation centers last May. Now, back home, she's playing for friends and often pops up at local fire fundraisers. Yeah. Music heals, just like my mom's art, like that heals. Like, it's, it just makes people feel good. She likes the, the eagle. The eagle, yeah, the bird. Family and art. Two things that have emboldened June and Olivia during this arduous year. But a new study of 500 residents finds not everyone in Fort McMurray has been as resilient. Dr. Vincent Agyapong says 13% of the population has developed PTSD symptoms. Another 15% are showing signs of a major depressive disorder. Staggering figures, but not shocking, he says, given Fort McMurray's somewhat transient nature. Those who reported that they did not have any family support or support from friends, they were about nine and a half times more likely to develop a post-traumatic stress disorder. Fort McMurray's local dynamics were also a catalyst in the surge of mental trauma cases. People are chasing insurance to rebuild their homes, uh, their jobs are under threat, people are being laid off in various sectors. So it's entirely possible that if those factors were not there, then the only stress people would have had to deal with would have been the wildfire, which means less people would have been as significantly impacted. A full year later, Agyapong says many patients have been able to rediscover their normal, but others are still coming out of the woodwork to finally confront their issues. Many lost their home last May, even if their house is still standing. The only thing holding them from leaving immediately is their house that they feel they need to kind of dispose of before they leave. I've seen about 10 people over the last four days alone. Part of the difficulty for impacted residents is simply accessing mental health services. By Agyapong's count, therapeutical wait times have jumped from a few weeks to a few months. Help is coming, though. Three new psychologists have just arrived. But perhaps the best prescription for patients can't be found inside a doctor's office. If you have your relatives in Nova Scotia, uh, other provinces, they should all be reaching out to you here in Fort McMurray, either by phone, by Skype, any of the uh, social media or telecommunication options that are available to provide that level of support. June knows she's one of the lucky ones. Her home is still standing, surrounded by a loving family. It's why she's insistent on giving back creating charcoal artwork for strangers to hang in their homes and helping school kids create their own trees. But she knows each piece is also for her. It means my bucket's full. It's, it's a good feeling. 
it's it's an important feeling it's it's a feeling that um, I can pass down to my kids it was 10 more days before we actually found out if our residents stood or not that's a long time and uh, I only found out in part because of Rogers wireless tech who I happen to know who I knew would be going to a cell phone tower just up around the bend from my place so I said to him are you going to town anytime soon going today you're gonna drive right by my building if you could take a picture so I can understand please and he did Kyle stopped the truck in the middle of Thickwood Boulevard and took pictures of our home so I could know that was tremendously burden lifted to get those in my email on my Facebook whatever it was and no hey it's all still there we have a place to go back to that's one thing we don't have to worry about he doesn't realize to this day how much that meant to me I'm sure I've told him I've told him many times but you know it was a little thing but it was a huge thing